The joke has been around almost as long as the dream. Nuclear fusion energy is 30 years away, and it always will be. But now, more than 80 years after Australian physicist Mark Oliphant first observed deuterium atoms fusing and releasing dollops of energy, it may finally be time to update the punchline. Over the last few years, more than two dozen research groups, including startups, university programs, and corporate projects, have made amazing progress in controlled nuclear fusion. They're building fusion reactors with designs that are very different from the two most common methods, which use either a huge magnetic vessel in the shape of a donut called a tokamak or very powerful lasers. Some of these groups also think that important fusion milestones will be reached within the next five years. Two, one, zero. This is the record-breaking reaction. It is more than 150 million degrees centigrade. 10 times hotter than the heart of the sun. And it happened here, the world's most powerful fusion plant, Jet Fusion, in Cullum in Oxfordshire. It is, say the team here, a landmark for this technology. Trying to harness the awesome power of nuclear fusion to usher in a new age of safe, clean, and massively abundant energy such as when the energy produced is equal to or greater than the energy used to start the reaction. That's a shockingly short amount of time, considering that projects using the standard tokamak and laser-based methods have been working for decades and spending billions of dollars without reaching break-even. Fusion research is one of the most expensive things to do, since a lab needs a lot of money just to pay its electricity bills. In order to get money, it can be tempting to exaggerate what will be done in the future, and people have been disappointed many times when they thought that big changes were coming. What's different now is that advances in high-speed computing, material science, modeling, and simulation are helping to knock down technical barriers that were once hard to move. And a lot of money is flowing into the field. As climate change accelerates and demand for electricity soars, nuclear fusion promises a zero-carbon, low-waste, baseload source of power, one that is relatively clean and comes with no risk of meltdowns or weaponization. This tantalizing possibility has kept the fusion dream alive for decades. Could one of these scrappy startups finally succeed in making fusion a practical reality? Plasma, with a high energy density, is known to be unstable and hard to control. It wriggles and twists and tries to get away. It moves to the edges of the field that holds it, where it quickly cools down and disappears. Most of the problems with fusion energy have to do with plasma, like how to heat it, hold it, shape it, and control it. Magnetic confinement and inertial confinement are the two most common ways. With the help of strong magnetic fields, magnetic confinement reactors, like ITER, try to keep the plasma in a tokamak from moving around. Inertial confinement methods, like those used by NIF, usually use lasers to quickly squeeze and collapse the plasma so that it stays in place long enough for the reaction to start. See Wendell Horton Jr., a physicist at the University of Texas Institute of Fusion Studies, is at the forefront of this work. He builds simulations of plasma flow and turbulence inside magnetic confinement reactors reactors on the Stampede supercomputer at the university. The results of Horton's research have been used to plan both big experiments like ITER and small projects. He and other researchers think that some of the small-scale efforts are much closer to achieving a steady-state reaction that could produce baseload electricity. TAE Technologies, which began in 1998 as Tri-Alpha Energy and is based in California, is one of the fusion startups with the most experience. The TAE reactor is made to use something called a field reversed configuration to make a ring of plasma that spins around and is held in place by its own magnetic field. The TAE reactor uses beams of high energy neutral hydrogen particles to force a reaction that makes alpha particles. Soft X-ray energy will deposit heat in the containment vessel. This heat will be turned into electricity by a standard thermal conversion system which boils water to make steam that turns a turbine. Hydrogen boron fusion is aneutronic which means that the main reaction doesn't make any harmful neutrons. The problem is that to burn the fuel, temperatures as high as 3 billion degrees Celsius are needed. Even though FRC machines seem less likely than some other magnetic confinement methods to cause plasma instability, no one has yet shown that an FRC reactor can make a stable plasma. Advanced computing is also reviving interesting research paths that were once put on hold years ago because of budget cuts or technical problems. The design of the startup General Fusion is a mix of magnetic confinement fusion and inertial confinement fusion 
fusion. It sends pulses of plasma fuel that are held together by magnets into a sphere with a vortex of molten lead and lithium inside. Around the reactor are pistons that push shock waves towards the center. This squeezes the fuel and forces the particles to join together in a fusion reaction. The heat is taken up by the liquid metal, which is then used to make steam that spins a turbine and makes electricity. In the 1970s, the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory tried to start nuclear fusion with a system of pistons. The fact that the shock waves couldn't be timed exactly was a big reason why these experiments didn't work. LaBerge's team has made advanced algorithms and very precise control systems to fine-tune the speed and timing of the shock waves and compression. Next up, using liquid metal could solve one of the main problems with fusion energy. Neutron radiation wears down the walls of a reactor, so they need to be replaced often and thrown away as low-level radioactive waste. The liquid metal keeps the solid wall on the outside from getting damaged. Some of the liquid metal is irradiated, but it doesn't need to be replaced often. Because of this, the reactor doesn't make a steady stream of low-level waste. LaBerge says that General Fusion's newest reactor, which produced plasma for the first time at the end of 2018, will show that nuclear fusion can be used from start to finish to make electricity. Hyperjet Fusion Corporation, based in Virginia, uses a method similar to that of General Fusion, but instead of pistons, it uses 600 plasma guns to shoot plasma jets into the reactor. When the jets come together, they make a plasma shell or liner. This liner then collapses and sets a magnetized target plasma on fire. Witherspoon says that the hyperjet method is better than tokamaks because it doesn't need expensive superconducting magnets to make the huge magnetic fields that are needed to keep the fusion burning plasma in place. Tokamaks are getting a new start thanks to the use of different superconducting materials that could make magnetic confinement more possible. The magnets on Commonwealth Fusion Systems Spark Reactor are made of yttrium barium copper oxide or YBCO, which is a high temperature superconductor. The company grew out of MIT. Some promising startups, on the other hand, aren't happy to just go with the flow and are looking at the physics behind fusion in new ways. The first light fusion method is one of the more radical ideas. This British company wants to make fusion using a design for an inertial confinement reactor that was inspired by a loud crustacean. The pistol shrimp is named for its large claw that looks like a gun and is used to stun prey. After pulling the hammer back, the shrimp snaps one part of its claw against the other side of the claw. This causes a quick change in pressure that makes voids in the water called cavitation bubbles. When these bubbles pop, they send 25 meter per second shock waves through the water, which can kill small marine animals. Hawker's doctoral dissertation at the University of Oxford was about the pistol shrimp's amazing claw. He started looking into whether it might be possible to copy and scale up the shrimp's physiology to start a fusion reaction that could make electricity. Hawker says that First Light hopes to start its first fusion reaction this year and to show net energy gain by 2024. Which of these ideas do you believe will bring fusion as a source of power to reality? Comment below.